here we are. This is the morning of our uh, Biab brew. This is going to be a modified Biab with a few uh, little tweaks just based upon equipment and ease of brewing. Uh, end result is going to be hopefully a very tasty IPA. Uh, again, as we said, starting off with the sparge water, I'm going to bring this up to our strike water temperature. Some of the other tools of the trade here for just this morning's portion of the activity. We have a Two gallon igloo jug. This will be the mash uh, louder tune. We have a paint strainer bag from Lowe's, two for five dollars, I believe it was. Have a thermometer, turkey thermometer from a turkey fryer kit. I have my grain bill, and I had this triple crushed at my local homebrew store so that we'll have a uh, very good conversion, uh, easy conversion in the mash, uh, in the mash tun, and then I have my scale. And in this case, this is already pre-measured. When I'm doing my own grains, uh, I'll use this scale here to weigh out uh, my particular parts of the uh, grain bill. Uh, it also, I will also use it later on to measure out the uh, uh, hops. And then the last piece, if you look over here. Not to make anyone dizzy, but have the laptop up, and this is all my resources for various things. I just calculated my strike water temperature based upon my total volume and, and some other factors uh, in my uh, process. And I, because I want to have a little bit drier beer, uh, we're looking at a strike temperature of about 162 degrees, which gives us a mash temperature of about 149 degrees, which will give us a reasonably dry beer uh, upon the end of fermentation. Uh, most of the stuff that I use is free internet based uh, resources uh, and I also have a brew log that I maintain on the hard drive. So here we are checking the temperature of the strike water. To make sure we're at the appropriate temperature. Uh, I also stirred it because uh, sometimes the water will get hotter in areas, some areas than others. So a good stir gets it nice homogeneous. 160, it's like 162. So at this point, I'm going to use that pan to transfer the strike water into this grain bed. And once we've transferred the strike water, I'll check the temperature again, make sure that we hit our mash temperature, and I'll put the lid on it, and I'll leave it for about a half an hour. And at the end of the half an hour, I'll open it. I'll do a gentle stir and mix to make sure that the water is all still making contact with the grain bed. I'll put the lid back on and let it go for another half an hour. All right, so simple as this. Here's the strike water going into our grain bed. And the smell is incredible. This is the initial push is right at two gallons. Uh, a lot of experimenting with uh, with this, and obviously it's a two gallon two gallon thermos, so that's all it's going to fit anyway uh, with absorptions, and it's a pretty tight, pretty snug fit. I can uh, comfortably get about five and a half pounds of grain in this particular mash tun with the water and feel like I'm not uh, mashing at too thick of a mash temperature, or too thick of a mash uh, consistency. I'll take this up to where I feel comfortable, which is about half an inch below the rim. A stir spoon. Give it a gentle mix and make sure that water is making contact with all my grain clear down to the bottom. Nice juicy mash. Make sure that we're in the ballpark.
48. And this is only to the accuracy of the thermometer. Alright. This is a modified biab, so there will be one sparge. Uh, I have my sparge water set out here and getting ready to set my timer for the mash as well. Approximately 15 minutes before the end of the mash, I will start the stove up and heat this water, and this will be used to sparge. And this is what the mash slaughter tun looks like. It's full, lids on, the extra bag wrapped around the top, and we're just waiting. Okay, so here it is at 30 minutes, checking our temperature, 150 mash temperature. So that water kind of settled around there and, and settled in with uh, all the grain bed. Uh, you can see what it looks like up on top. I'm going to give it a swirl, put the lid back on it, and let it go for another 30. As you can see, we've uh, set up our boil area in anticipation of completing the, uh, the boil and getting our pot on here. I'll be sitting out here monitoring. Uh, usually I'll have a few beers lined up there next to the uh, the scale that we'll be using for the hops. However, it is 6 o'clock in the morning and it's cold as hell here. So I will just be uh, sitting in here uh, jamming on the internet and uh, watching my beer boil. Alright, we're getting ready to wash the uh, Wash the wart and uh, collect up the wart. I've heated up some sparge water at 160 degrees and that's just going to be a, a gentle sparging to loosen up the sugars uh, from what doesn't come out of this first uh, bag. In the original biab process you would use uh, one quantity of water and your grains and uh, do your mash in one step and then just pull the bag out and, and start your boil. Uh, because my mash ton is uh, a little smaller uh, I do this in two steps. I haven't had any issues with the process in doing this way. It saves me from buying a larger uh, a larger mash tun and uh, larger bags. So this is what our grains look like after an hour of mashing. And what I'm going to do, you may be able to see these in the background, but I'm going to use my hand to pull the uh, bag up and let it drain free. And then with my other hand, I'm going to use these and I'm going to squeeze as much of the water as I can gently out of the bag. Then I'm going to move the bag over into here and set it here. I'm going to transfer the wort from the green container into my boil pot and then I'm going to move the grain bag back into the pot and add my uh, sparge water. Uh, I'll gently stir the sparge water and then I'll pull the bag out and repeat the same process and then once I transfer that, that's my completed wort. That's all that I'll be messing with the grains at this point, and we'll show you at the end of the process. So here are the grains in the bag. I've squeezed them. I'm going to go ahead and set them aside. They're still dripping, but that's okay. All right. Set those grains aside, and that's really, really high-grade first runnings right there. And we're going to transfer those into the pot, and then I'm going to put the bag back into the green igloo and uh, add some more water, uh, loosen up the sugars a little bit more and repeat the same process. Uh, again, it's just, it's just done uh, one time with the original mash and then, a, uh, and then one sparge and that will give me my vol volume to uh, do my boil. So as you can see, I've reset the uh, green bag and this is the wort we've collected so far. And we're just going to add some more water, about 160 degrees here. Not so hot that it's going to extract any tannins, but warm enough to loosen up the sugars from the, uh, from the grain again. And so here we have all of the collected wort. And uh, I just put it on the burner here about a minute ago and getting it started to uh, prep for the boil. And you can see already that it's uh, getting ready to churn. I need to go ahead and prep my uh, my hops additions and uh, and then settle in for the boil. Okay, 
we've reached boil point. We went past hot break and we managed to control that just by stirring and adjusting the heat down at the same time. Uh, and now we've just uh, got a nice little roiling boil there with our 60 minute add of pearl hops. And uh, I've moved the rest of the operation over here so I can reach my freezer, but we're going to weigh out the, uh, the rest of the hops, place them into the hops bags, and uh, continue on. So here we are. We're about 40, 45 minutes into the boil. We've done our second hops addition, which is in the hops bag there, and it's just bubbling away. Got some break material floating around in there. Uh, we'll take care of that just before flame out with some uh, Irish moss. We'll throw that in there and get all that crap to precipitate out so that we can transfer just clear wort into the fermenter. And the last step is cooling down the uh, wort. This is about the cheapest way I can find to do it uh, short of spending the money to get myself a wort chiller, which sometime very near future I need to purchase one of those. But as for right now, uh, just some ice uh, in an ice bath and the, this tub happens to uh, fit my boil pot pretty well and within about 10 or 15 minutes this will be cooled down to about uh, 80 degrees or so. And here we are just about to the final step. I've got my pot there and very soon I'm going to hook up my transfer tube and transfer all of the clear wort into the fermenter and then I will aerate and pitch my yeast and we'll be off and cooking. Seven days after that I'll throw the dry hops in and uh, conduct the dry hop process and then after that we will probably cold crash for clarity and bottle.